Hi, everyone. Uh, so today we're talking about biology and the Wagadu Chronicles, uh, and it's Alan here. Hi, I'm Maria. Hey, Maria. I hope I'm pointing in the right direction because you never know where it shows. Yeah, you are in my left, so. Okay, cool. Then that looks right. Uh, yes, yeah, so briefly, I guess, introductions on who we are. So for me, uh, by now, I think most people know me. Uh, I'm Alan, I founder of Twin Drums and game designer for the Wagadu Chronicles. And it would be cool to hear a bit about your background, Maria. So my name is Maria. Uh, I'm originally from Spain. Uh, and I've been traveling around the world and studying biology for quite a few years now. Um, I started my bachelor's in Australia, loved it. I did lots of field work. Uh, lots of uh, work in the ground, which in Spain I may not have necessarily had the opportunity to do. Uh, and then I moved for the first time to Africa. I worked in a really cool project in South Africa. I was living in the middle of the field. There was no internet, no phone connection, no anything. Um, I absolutely loved it. It was the first time I got to be doing what I really wanted to do in the field, working with people that had the same interests as me. And doing science, researching things, it was great. Uh, so then I left for the Netherlands to study a master's because I definitely love the research side of things. Um, I did a master's as part of that. I went to Kenya where I got to work with uh, lions, not hands-on researching. No, it sounds like literally you were in an office with sitting next to lions and the lions yeah, were- No, no, no. <laughs> in a vehicle, keeping my distance. Okay. Yeah, I was also investigating human wildlife conflict, specifically lions predating on cattle, and a device that has been invented called lion lights or flashlights to deter this from happening. I really, really liked it. Um, so yeah, that's basically me. For the last few years, I've been doing on and odd jobs. Uh, it's a bit of a difficult field to get a job in. Um, and yeah, that's basically me. Uh, I'm a biologist. I have a master's in conservation. Uh, I am very interested in the African environment, specifically for the trophic structure it has. It has a lot of predators and a lot of herbivores, which for me, it's amazing. Um, when you compare it with some of the more downgraded systems like we have in Europe, where maybe you have only a few predators. Wait, so, so did you just call the European system like the nature downgraded compared to Africa? <laughs> well, it's just, there's, a lot more predators that have become extinct. Okay. In, uh, so for example, um, thousands of years ago, there used to be lions in Europe, at, at least in Southern Europe, like Spain, extinct many thousands of years ago. Whereas in Africa, for example, just in the larger predator side of things, you have lions, you have leopards, you have cheetahs, you have hyenas, and you have, oh, I forgot, wild dogs. Uh, so that's amazing. And then you have the herbivores, where you can have like 27 herbivores, larger sized, I'm not counting rodents and the like. So that for someone that is very interested in predator-prey relationships is amazing and it's an amazing environment to be in. I'm super happy to hear this and it kind of makes sense. Like basically Europe, maybe 15,000 years ago was like more similar to Africa. It had bigger animals and predators, right? Uh, and uh, uh, More than 1,500, but yeah. Okay. Then I love see how I get myself in trouble with numbers. So. Yeah, but I'm also I'm not into archaeology and so I don't wanna get into that. Yeah, but that's super interesting and uh, super cool. And definitely like nature is one of the reasons to why you know the Wagado Chronicles is inspired by Africa. Of course, uh, the cultures and the people are the primary reason, but you know, we have so many things we can look at inspiration from like many of the people, the lineages of Wagadu have animal traits, like the lion bloods, of course, yeah. uh, or the daima that have like the moth elements in them and so on. So I think it's, it's really like, there was always since from the very beginning with the Wagadu Chronicles, this connection with, with nature, right? Which fits many of the cultures uh, that inspire the Wagadu Chronicles because nature, I mean, the connection with nature is much stronger. I find even my experience with like, like with Ghanaian uh, like kind of traditions and, and, uh, and mythology, like you still have forests that are considered to be sacred and like you, you, don't, you don't go there, you don't cut trees, some places you don't enter. The, there's rules, uh, I, I think um, from uh, in Accra traditionally, I think Tuesday or Thursday was like non-fishing day, like it was mm -hmm. a, like a taboo to go fishing because the fisheries had to replenish. Like there's lots of these na nature related rules that 
um, uh, like, you know, more visible in Africa from a tradition point of view. So, but I'm curious to ask about like uh, speaking about games and the Chronicles. Like, what's your connection? Because that was super interesting for me when we met first. Like, what's your connection with games and uh, and and sort of what's the crossover as well? Yeah. So I started GMing. I think less than a year ago, maybe a bit more. Um, so I am a game master for a Pathfinder game. So that's a tabletop RPG. And from the very beginning, I wanted to introduce nature because I think it's sometimes an underused part of games and our life. Like there's just so many things that can happen in nature. Oh, you're trekking along the forest close to a river. Guess what? Flash floods. Or, you know, you're treading through the savanna. Guess what? Whistling thorns. And now you have to decide, are you going to take a detour? Are you going to go through the thorns, which not only are going to do piercing damage to you, but maybe there's also lions hiding under them or whatever other predators. I'm so scared about being a player. It sounds awesome and terrifying. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I really wanted to inc incorporate more nature in my games. And I think it's definitely possible. And the same in video games, like in certain, I don't know, can I mention na games by name? Yes, sure. yes, feel free. Okay, so in games like Skyrim or No Man's Sky, exploration is one of the things that I love the most. Finding little hidden areas that are not in maps, uh, beautiful scenery. And I think there's a lot more to be done in there, which is one of the reasons I contacted you. Because uh, I thought, you know what? It's a video game. It's fantasy based, which I love. It's taking inspiration from Africa. Maybe I could help in some way. And if I can, it'd be amazing if I could. Yeah, and that was so great. Thank you so much for getting in touch because, you know, I had no clue. I just thought like, oh, that's super cool. Someone is interested in the project, which was quite early on at the time. Like we hadn't shown much, basically just the Twitter, right? Uh, there was some Twitter comments. Yeah. yeah. So I had actually been following you, you guys for many months. Uh, like I found it and I had been following it and I kept trying to think if it was a good idea to contact you. You know, I was like, oh, I, I have nothing to offer. Uh, what can I do? You know, they already seem to have so much done. But then I thought, you know what, if I don't try, I, I don't know if I may be helpful, you know? So I may as well miss a challenge and be like, hey, I'm a biologist. Um, I have experience working in Africa. Um, I have experience in playing video games and in TTRPGs. Are you interested in perhaps me helping you out? And when you answered positively to have a chat and see where things went, I was so happy. Yeah, awesome. Uh, same here. So really thanks so far. And uh, I'm really happy that now that we are kind of growing as a team, like uh, coming in as an official consultant uh, for us. Uh, I think it's really awesome. This is developing from just like a chat. It's like give us some tips to like, hey, let, you know, do some, we're actually building the, the levels of the game and the islands. So help us with some consulting. And now, for instance, um, like we're really working hard on the rainforest uh, biome of, of the game. And uh, yeah, that was it was super cool that you, were, you provided some really in-depth consulting. Maybe you want to comment a bit about that, how it felt like, how was the experience of researching for Rainforest for a video game for the Vagado Chronicles? Yeah, it was very interesting. I think one of the main things was, one thing that you tell, told me to make clear was, we don't want this to look like a generic rainforest or maybe a South American rainforest, which is what you see in a lot of things. Uh, so when I started doing research, I was actually really struck by how underrepresented and unknown the African forest is. Uh, to really, it's, it's really bad. Uh, so I had to do a lot of deep research into it to find the things that are most different about it. So for example, a lot of African rainforests actually do have a dry season. And mm -hmm. I thought something that, you know, most people think, oh, rainforest, it's raining all the time throughout the year. Some parts of Africa, it isn't. There are short, dry seasons and plants are adapted to it. So my research basically entailed in what are rainforests in Africa, what defines them or what sets them apart. One of the things is the short, dry season. Um, another thing was something that you also pointed to me that you were really interested, which were bys, which are forest clearings. Uh, very, very important for animals like forest elephants and gorillas. So I went into investigating that and I found that there's actually not just one type of forest clearing, but there's many. Um, so I guess from Wagaru, I, I made a document which explained some of these things, uh, explained the different structure of the forest, how it could be used maybe in, in the game or maybe not. 
And more recently, I have been looking for plant assets for the game, which has been really fun, finding out different plants and also going into ethnobotany. So the uses of plants that people normally take, and that has been really interesting. And it's been an area of research I've always been very interested in, but that I've never had a chance to actually engage in professionally. So now actually getting to do that has been really great. I love like how different elements of different disciplines are coming together for games. That's one yeah. of the reasons why I love video games is that, um, you know, like music, uh, history, uh, like, uh, you know, visual arts, you know, paintings, like there's so many things, uh, of course, engineering that come together to create it. So even like seeing you within your field, you're going like, oh, while I was researching and, you know, creating uh, content for the work at the Chronicles, there were different disciplines that were coming, coming together. It's like, it makes me so happy, it brings me so much joy. And uh, by the way, the, uh, I was in the rainforest before the world ended uh, last year in Ghana, uh, and um, uh, it, was, it was during the dry season. So I, I noticed as well, like, because that had been the previous time was the rainy season, and it was very wet and slippery. And I had a friend of mine who had this very interesting idea of going with a laptop and was really struggling because everything was wet, yeah. <laughs> everything's like, why did you bring your laptop? Everything was wet and we're like going through the trees and everything. And then I went again expecting, I, I, had, I forgot it was the rainy, uh, the dry season. I mean, I knew, but I didn't really connect the dots. Like, oh, but the rainforest. So we would travel like a few hours to the rainforest from Accra. And then everything was, the soil was sandy and dry and there was no water. And some trees had no leaves as well. And I was like, wow, this is still, of course, it was still green rainforest and rich, but it was very different, like very different, you know, it was not slippery, it was not, so that's, uh, and I agree with you, like even Googling, there's so little about the African rainforest. If you Google like rainforest screenshots or something, it's almost always either uh, the, um, uh, Brazil, right? So uh, the Amazon, or maybe uh, New Guinea or somewhere else in Asia, uh, which is a pity because there's, uh, yeah, so I, I'm so happy the game is an opportunity to showcase, of course it's fantasy, so it's going to be, you know, a bit different, but I'd like to showcase, um, the, you know, another part of the world and more nature. And uh, maybe I think interesting thing would be, what do you think were challenges or things that were a bit unexpected or tricky while you were researching? Like, of course you mentioned there's a bit less material, but how, how what was kind of the challenge? I mean, I don't know. I'm still thinking that you should share pictures of me of how the rainforest was if you have pictures between the woods. Yeah, I do have. I, do I would that. love to see that. I honestly think the biggest challenge was simply the lack of information. Mm. Everything else, even if maybe it was a challenge, it was a positive challenge. Like, I really enjoyed it. So, for example, uh, finding trees was no issue. Uh, they're very well catalogued industry is very important in Africa, logging, so they're very well catalogued, uh, but finding, for example, herbs, that was very complicated. Mm -hmm. It actually drove me to looking into, as I said, ethnobotany, and instead of trying to find actual plant species, going into, uh, for example, go to the Baka people of the Congo and look at what plants did they use, and through that correct method, finding new plant species. Or, for example, knowing some of the animals that we want to include, like the Congo pea fowl, I went online and researched its diet, trying to find dietary studies of what plants has it been eating, and then that way indirectly finding new cool plant species that maybe could go into the game. But you know, it was a challenge, but it was a fun challenge. So. Yeah, the Congo pea fowl, I'm so looking forward to. We haven't put it in the game yet, but it's like one of the goals, and of the super uh, or let's see, like it would be super cool if we can get even like a bit of, uh, you know, like um, the food chain happening so that we can get them to go to certain plants. Let's see, like, you know, it's, uh, it depends on what we manage to achieve in time. I think having these elements there and being able to pick and choose, uh, you know, it's such a great thing. So thanks by the way, like so much for the work uh, that you've put in. It's, uh, the team is really happy and um, yeah, well, uh, so one thing maybe as we get towards the wrapping up uh, of this uh, really interesting chat, uh, what would be kind of like your uh, hope and wish for um, biology in games in general? And then I guess for the Wagata Chronicles, so stuff you'd like to see more, maybe there's other developers listening and other people like, what can we push for a bit? What would you like to push for? Wow. That's a very big question. I think first for Wagadu, I would really, really like it to see P 
people role playing since the, there is a very heavy focus on role playing and lore i would like to see nature based lore and nature based role playing so players actually interacting with nature and learning more about through it even if it's a fantasy setting i think video games allows to explore nature in a different way because nature can respond you know they can be nature spirits they plants can interact with you uh, so i'm really looking forward to that and being able to play in that myself and as for nature in video games in general, I don't know, I think just looking beyond the regular stuff that everybody puts in and finding a bit of inspiration in nature, because honestly, there's such crazy stuff happening in nature that I don't think most developers maybe know about, but it trumps some of the things that I see in video games. You think, you think that's weird? You should hear about this weird carnivorous plants in the African rainforest because it trumps your carnivorous plant. I think uh, making a deeper dive into nature and learning about the ways everything interacts with each other, which I think is something that is normally not done. And interaction in nature, I think, will lead to some very fun mechanics in games that could be exploited. That is uh, such a great answer. And uh, I hope to see more of this as well. Let's see what we can do for yeah. the Ogata Chronicles, what we're doing already. So thank you so much, um, everyone, for listening. And thank you so much, Maria, for, for you know, your time and, uh, and uh, you know, supporting the project and, and being with us. So yeah, maybe we should do this again. Um, and um, any last comments on your end? No, I mean, thank you very much for accepting my random message into the nothingness and establishing this collaboration. It has been very interesting for me professionally and personally. And I just want to say to everyone, check out the Bogado Kickstarter. See if it's your thing. They also have a TTRPG. It's free. Go get it. Explore it. Enjoy it. That's it. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.